Five, for sure. Yeah, do, yeah. do we need to re-spool or are we good? Well, good evening, everyone. I am Dr. Rahi Victory, your host of Fertility Factor Fiction. And this week, we are just going to be answering your questions because Tarek and I have been goofing around too much to get it right. So um, I've been laughing my head off at him just trying to aim the camera for the last few minutes. So welcome to the show. For those of you that are new, uh, we answer your questions on anything related to infertility. Full disclaimer, you need to follow anything I say up with your physician. I am merely giving you advice based on theoretical or hypothetical cases that are presented, but um, we do know the data pretty well and we are happy to present it all to you. <laughs> no matter how early we get together, there's always this like last minute rush to get the show organized and Tarek's always panicking at the last few minutes. So I am laughing at Tarek's panic, but apparently we're all good now. So welcome to the show. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to pop them up there. We have a couple from people that pre ask their questions because they know they'll probably get a good chance of having them answered. And uh, we're going to attack some of those. We might even be able to find some of the older questions and go over those if we run out. So uh, nothing super new or exciting to report this week. Um, I panned through all the journals. There's nothing amazing coming out. Um, there is a very interesting article by Richard Scott, which is published in, um, I think, Reproductive Biomedicine Online, regarding an article published in the New England Journal with regards to PGT. And he demonstrates mathematically how, and, and in terms of scientific, um, you know, proper uh, procedure and process, um, how ridiculous the study that was published in the New England Journal was, which is interesting because it is the New England Journal. So you would think they would catch a problem in a study, but they didn't. And his criticisms are entirely valid. So um, while this study showed that there was no benefit to doing PGT, it was designed to show no benefit to PGT. You couldn't come out of it with any other outcome. So we still don't have data demonstrating a very significant positive for PGT, but this study definitely did not demonstrate um, that it wasn't useful because it's kind of a useless study. Are you like lightheaded over there, man? <laughs> Somehow, there's, there's a lot of stress in the beginning. I'm not gonna lie. Somehow, I'm gonna lie to <laughs> I All right, fire away. I feel good, though. You okay? Yeah. Oh, we didn't even bring you a drink. Uh -oh. It's okay. We'll survive. You'll survive? All right, fire away. From Australia. Oh, Australia. Hello. Down under. Hello, Dr. VNT. VNT. I have a question about NK cells. Okay. Can you really test it using blood? How accurate is it? And can it also be tested through biopsy on a specific day of the cycle? Yeah, so there's huge controversy about whether your blood should be tested or menstrual blood or essentially an endometrial biopsy. Nobody knows for sure. There is an entire journal dedicated to reproductive immunology and there is always an article saying it should be this one or it should be that one. So nobody really knows. You can test it in blood. We use Fertilisys and that's where they test it and I'm quite happy with the results they present. Um, but a lot of people will do it from the endometrium via biopsy and stain for um, CD57 or 158. And there's a bunch of different stains they can use to look for specific cell types which correlate with the natural killer cells. Um, which one should you do? Uh, we try and avoid biopsies as much as possible because it's kind of inhumane torture. Um, so we just do the serum blood test, but either one is acceptable as long as you're know what your target is and what you're looking for and how to interpret it. Oh man, there's a question that just showed up. Okay. There's a bunch before it. Yeah. But this you're going right to up. this one? Going right to this one. All right. You'll find out why. <laughs> My favorite Tarek. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't know how I can ignore it. Is that all, as opposed to all our other favorite Tareks? And an O-K-R-E. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ouch! I can't. My I can't, feelings. I can't, yeah, you know. That's. Um, how do I ignore that one? How, how do you read that one? Actually, is my question. 
<laughs> All right, go but ahead. They're still asking the okay are in the question. So okay. it goes to show they're doing it just for me. Oh, yeah, thanks. They're doing it yeah. just yeah. for me. Yeah, all right. I'm going to be nice this time. I'll yeah. let it slide. Uh, serious question is from the looks of it, for what it's worth. Okay. <laughs> Endometritis and fresh transfer. Yes okay. or no? Part hmm? one of the question. No, never. Uh, never. Endometritis? Yeah. No, you can't transfer into endometritis. Never. You need to treat it. So you automatically need a frozen embryo transfer. Would be on antibiotics for about seven days by the time of potential transfer. Should I just see if it makes it to freeze? Um, so if you're worried your embryos won't make it to freezing, you could freeze them on day three. Um, having said that, if they're not going to make it to day five, they probably aren't strong enough to make it inside you either. Um, controversial, but there was a recent study that supported that. Uh, in terms of endometritis, a week of antibiotics will not do the trick. We usually treat our patients for a month and we still don't get rid of all the bacteria. So um, it can take a long time to treat endometritis properly. So do not transfer into a uterus that is known to have endometritis. It won't work and you'll be wasting embryos. <laughs> I can't even look at you anymore. They're, all right. Uh... They're on fire tonight. They're, they're good today. They're, they're really good. They're always good. This, this, is, this is a great crowd. This okay. Is, this is one of my favorite people in the world. All these guys here. Ladies, gals, all of it. Yep. High tea with a wink. Okay. So she's responding to what's going on right now. She's in on it. Okay. But she has a whole bunch of questions, to be honest. Okay. So it's big. Okay. That was her last comment. High tea with the wink. Okay. So now I'm going to read all her questions. All right. She cut the line. One at a time, but let's yeah. go. Hi, Dr. VNT. Okay. My RE wants me to use Orlissa and Letrozole for an endo protocol prior to FED. Sure. I am not fully convinced after you said Lupron Depot and Letrozole. What do you think? Can I do this transfer? Number one. Uh, let me answer that one. Yeah. So there's no data on using Orlissa and Letrozole. There is data on Lupron and Letrozole. In theory, it should have the same effect, but I can't promise you that because there's no study on it. So um, I'm going to venture it would be okay, but my question would be why not just use the Lupron and Letrozole? Can three months of Lupron Depot Letrozole protocol be started anytime in a cycle as long as you aren't pregnant? Or does it have to be CD1? I just had a lap, no sex, so I know I'm not pregnant. Yeah, you can start at any time. Day one of your cycle makes it a little bit easier, but it doesn't actually remember what time. Sorry. Disco. <laughs> yeah. My kid picked the ringtone and, you know, we're, we're stuck with that. Um, so, yeah, no, you can do it on any day. It won't make a difference, but um, we definitely try a name for cycle day one, but it doesn't always work. So you can take Lupron at any time. My doc finally okayed me doing Lupron Depot with Letrozole. Yay. Awesome. But uh -oh. he said only 2.5 Letrozole. Will that work? Um, no, you probably need five to fully suppress. So I would go with five. Yeah, five would definitely give you a better result than 2.5 will. Okay, you ready? I'm always ready. Hello. Hello. See, I'm, I'm being completely fair. Now you're just, just being just straight. Trouble. Hello. No Dr. V. Yeah. Nothing. Just hello. Oh, okay, R-E. I didn't even get my full name in there. I got nothing. Yeah, I got nothing. Got nothing. I got reproductive endocrinologist. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 At 10 weeks pregnant okay. after an FET. Congrats. When do you advise patients to stop PIO injections? 12 weeks. We tell them at 12 weeks. Super controversial. Some people stop at six, some people stop at eight, some people stop at 10, some at 12. We go all the way to 12. By that time, your placenta should be fully responsible for taking over progesterone production. So I feel comfortable stopping it then. Hi, Dr. VNT. I just received, I just received lab results for TPO. Okay. Uh, thyroid peroxidase, peroxidase antibodies. antibodies. Yeah. My level is 10.85 IU over ML. Is that too high? And what does this mean for me? And how can it affect starting an IVF cycle? So I have to go back and look at thyroid antibody reports. I think that's a normal level, unless it's milli international units, in which case that would be really high. Uh, so I apologize, I'm off on my units at the moment, 
but I think they're normally reported in milli international units. So if that's 10, it might be high. If it's um, just normally international units, that's not high at all. Yeah, it has to be over like um, 30, 40 for us to be worried about it. Hello to both. Okay, fair, okay. yeah. I like Wondering it. how much more progesterone would you prescribe to your endo patients? Thank you, and then there's a heart. So the study we reviewed a couple weeks ago said that the dividing line between the endo and the non-endo patients was 118 nanomoles per liter, and the average in the endo group was 150. So we are now targeting somewhere between 118 and 150. I'm just scrolling to see if there's any, uh, any favoritism, but everyone's being very... Everyone's being really professional? Everyone's being really professional right, All right. now. Forces me to be that way too. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, Dr. VNT. Yep. What would you recommend for someone with a thyroid level 0. 0.6 and what implications can it have on IVF? Interesting thyroid thing. 0.6 would be normal. So um, anything over 0.3 is considered euthyroid up to 2.5 being optimal for pregnancy. So you'd still be normal. As long as your T4 um, and T3 are not abnormally elevated, you're fine. There's no issues. Alternative to birth control priming for egg retrieval for endo patients. Uh, no one should birth control prime. It's terrible. Um, it suppresses you and increases miscarriage risks. Um, so you could use testosterone, human growth hormone, DHEA. Um, if you're worried about endo, the only one that's ever actually been shown to um, improve your outcomes is Vizan for three months prior to your IVF protocol. Um, that's if you're doing a fresh transfer. We don't recommend fresh transfers for any endo patients. So I don't think it really makes a difference. Now, if you have endo and DOR, you got to kind of skip the endo and go for the push to get your ovaries to make as many eggs as possible. But if you are just dealing with endo, Vizan would be the best way to go. Uh, can you guys let us know if the audio is good and just send us some thumbs up or something like that? Yeah, that's something so we know. Just send us a little message saying, so yes, the audio is good. Ah, uh, yeah, Tarek wants to know if his voice is audible. His new Bluetooth microphone didn't work, so we need to try again. <laughs> going to Best Buy. Oh, good. Yeah. That's the right way. That's, yeah. You know, I tried being a loser and go within the, you know, the little niche stores. The niche stores is not happening. It's not happening. All right. Aha. Uh -huh. Does Clomid and IVF cause cancer? And how many IVF cycles is too many? Clomid had evidence from a very old study that was very poorly done that if you used it for more than 12 cycles, it increased your risks of ovarian cancer. That has never subsequently been proven, but you shouldn't be using Clomid for 12 cycles anyways because there's no value to doing that. IVF itself has been studied very carefully. It has been looked at for every type of cancer possible. The only thing IVF is associated with is an increased risk of borderline ovarian tumors, which are not malignant um, except for very rare cases. So yes, there is some change, but it's a very, very rare thing to see. Um, of all the cases of IVF I've ever done, I've actually never had a single patient that showed up with a borderline ovarian tumor. So it's really very, very rare. Thumbs up on the audio. Oh, good. All right. Glad for the audio. Thank you to whoever gave us the thumbs up. That's you know, awesome. Not, not a people, oh, I can hear T. Yes, audio is good. Excellent. I can hear your bestie, Tariq. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on here. There oh, is. A lot of thumbs up on Instagram. It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Audio is great today. Excellent. It was software suppression for what it's worth. Okay. <laughs> All right, next. Hi, T. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. You're really getting high off this show, you know that? It makes my whole week. Anything can happen to me. I know. And I can just... And you love the show. I'm just going. Yeah, this is Tarek. We're going to rename the show Tarek's Feel Good Show. Feel Good Hour. T's Feel Good Hour. Yeah. Let's resolve. Yeah. To prime for egg retrieval instead of birth control. Endo patient. Um... You wouldn't use it to prime. 
you would just use it to, to stimulate as part of an IVF cycle if you have DOR or if you have endo to keep your estrogen levels low, but you don't use it to prime. It won't work properly if you do that. So no, I wouldn't prime, which means before your stimulation, but during your stim, sure. Good evening, TV crew. TV crew. Blue heart. Oh, very nice. I've tried two failed IUIs okay. in an attempt to go forward with IVF each time. Okay. My IE, my RE, sorry, won't retrieve just one egg. Why oh. do they say this is better to do an IUI with only one? Um, well, uh, they probably don't have a lot of experience with natural cycle IVF. That's one, because um, we do it all the time. And they're probably charging you a lot and don't want to only get one egg. So we have a much lower price for our natural cycle IVF cycles, like it's literally half price, um, to assist people because obviously if you're only making one egg, then you need help and you may need multiple cycles, so we drop the price. Your RE either doesn't offer that or just doesn't have experience with it or doesn't feel it's worth it because maybe in their lab, they don't do well enough with just one egg. So that can be a problem. Hello, Dr. Green T. Can you wait until you get a positive test before you stop using adverse skin care ingredients, i.e. retinol fragrance, uh, celiac acid, or must they be stopped when trying to conceive? Oh, dear God. Don't use any tretinoin or vitamin A acid gel or anything like that. You should get off of all of that stuff while you're trying to conceive. Um, anything with vitamin A, tretinoin based product is severely teratogenic, so do not be using that. Um, that can actually make your baby turn out looking extremely abnormal, um, so don't do that. Vitamin A? Vitamin A, well, tretinoin. High doses of vitamin A, over 10,000 units um, is per day, is teratogenic. Yeah, it'll make the baby become abnormal. So you got to watch your vitamin A intake. I don't even take vitamin A. There you go. I said forget about the whole thing. Can't risk it. <laughs> what type of exercise do you recommend for pregnancy if you already work out five days a week? Strength, cardio, and yoga. Oh, wow. Um, well, first of all, invite me and T over because we both need to burn off dinner. Yeah. Uh, and then um, any kind of exercise in pregnancy is good. Just no heavy lifting or straining. And we generally try and get you to keep your heart rate under 120. Remember that the more um, your heart rate is going fast, the less blood flow and oxygen you're actually delivering to the baby because your muscles start needing more blood and oxygen, your heart needs more blood and oxygen, and your brain will shunt the blood away from the baby to those other organs or uh, anatomical parts to supply them with the blood and oxygen and sugar that they need, your baby will get less. So you don't need to kind of overdo it in pregnancy. Uh, exercise is great, we support it, we, we encourage it, but don't overdo it. We apparently have a record show, that's great. Thank you all for watching, we love that. Tarek's quite proud of himself in the... In the <laughs> Tarek is apparently in love with all of you. Big love. Yeah. I can't say that or I'll get sued. Yeah, yeah. That's why they don't see me. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. sound bad. I can't say it. Some, yeah. some strange yeah. voice in the yeah. background. Yeah, I appreciate you all. How's there you it? go. That's there great. That's, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Hi, Dr. VNT. I'm starting uh, pro, pro virus? Pergovirus? Pergovirus. Okay. Yeah. Pergovirus. Yeah. Due to the Menupur shortage. Yes. Is this an effective as Menupur or Gonalef? Um, so pergovirus is a combination of gonalef and um, luvirus, uh, which is LH, recombinant LH with recombinant FSH. Um, there are no head-to-head -head studies. Uh, if you look at the British literature that I often quote on the best balance of gonadotropins to achieve the highest rate of genetically normal embryos, it's half recombinant to half urinary. Because both of those are recombinant, I, I don't know, guys. Like, there's no data on this to prove that it's better, or worse, different. But we always mix, like, half recombinant with half urinary. Menopur is probably the most popular and well-designed urinary. And then we use Gonalef because it's 
to probably one of the best, if not the best, um, recombinant FSH. So that's the way we've structured it. Is the Medicare shortage affecting your patients or have any implications for, I don't know, for CA? For Canada. Oh, for Canada. Uh, yeah, well, we don't know yet. It just started and we still have some supply, but we're running short quickly. So hopefully it'll be back around. Um, but at the moment, we don't know. So we'll see what our embryos look like you know, on the flip side of this with the gonalef and the Luvaris, which is what we're using. We're using gonalef and Luvaris. I don't use Pergovirus because the ratio, in my opinion, should be different, but um, we are using um, we are using gonalef and Luvaris. Does using HCG as a male improve sperm morphology? And does using HCG for long periods, six to 12 months, hurt fertility in any way? Um, so I'll answer the second part first. No, it definitely doesn't hurt fertility in any way or have any long-term side effects. Um, does it improve morphology? Definitely no. Morphology is going to be based on heat, oxygen delivery, exposures, chemical exposures, um, electromagnetic radiation exposures, uh, frequency of ejaculation, smoking, drinking, drug use, all of that stuff. Um, your HCG consumption or, or use will not in any way alter the morphology. It actually is designed to boost your hormone levels to get you to make more sperm, but it shouldn't do anything to the morphology. Dr. VNT. Yeah. I have an AMH of 5.92 nanograms. I have lean wow. PCOS and stage one endo that was recently removed through laparoscopic surgery. Awesome. After four failed IUIs moving to IVF. Great. What protocol would you use? Um, antagonist, uh, gonalef and menopure, relatively low dose because you've got super strong ovaries. Um, lots of supplements. Make sure your vitamin D is up. Resveratrol, inositol, um, coenzyme Q10, NAC. Uh, and then don't go for more than 11 or 12 days maximum for stim. Uh, double trigger, but make sure they keep your HCG level low if your estrogen goes really high. Definitely a frozen embryo transfer. Letrozole protocol for that. Double progesterone and you should be fine. You're going to do great. Congrats. How often do you find that IVF patients need thyroid medication to lower their TSH? Um, I haven't actually studied the number. I would say we probably give it to about 25% of our patients. 15% of the population is hypothyroid, so it's not a shocker that in the fertility population, you're going to have that extra 10% you catch. So I'd probably guess it's around 25%. Reasonable estimate. Hi, Dr. VNT. That's me. And I have no symptoms but plan for laparoscopy for search for endo. Sure. If major endo is found, yeah. is it almost always possible for IVF to work? Ooh. Um, well, it depends on how severe the endo is, number one. And number two, uh, it depends on your age and the sperm quality and all that other stuff. So uh, I'm never going to tell anybody ever that IVF is a guarantee because it isn't. No one can ever guarantee that IVF will work. Um, we get very close, for example, with our donor program, but I still don't promise people 100% it's going to work because I can't. So um, IVF is very powerful. In the right hands with the right tools and technology and the right lab and right everything else, you can get stellar results. But is it 100% every time? No, definitely not. So bad endo can make it harder, but there are endo protocols that we use that basically normalize your success rates. So hopefully, no matter how bad your endo is, we can get it almost as good or as good as it would be if you didn't have the endo. Hi, Dr. v &T. I have a day six embryo. Okay. My clinic doesn't make a difference for FET for day five, six embryos. Okay. Based on my ERA, they use 120 hours PIO. Sure. Is that enough? Um, so we reviewed a study a long time ago on the show that showed that for day five embryos, either five days of progesterone, which is 120, 
or six days, which would be 144, is acceptable. But they had a lower miscarriage rate when you did six days of progesterone with a day six embryo. So we typically do six for day six and five for the day five. Um, so that's what we do. As far as your error test is concerned, it's useless. I'm so sorry for that. Do not follow your error test for anything. It's absolutely useless. It's meaningless. So the error test has been proven to be useless. It does not benefit anybody. Hi, Dr. Green T. What are the optimal estrogen progesterone LH FSH levels at baseline and before starting PIO in Canada? Um, wow. Optimal FSH LH. There isn't really an optimal. You want them all low. Um, your estrogen, you want reasonable. If you're doing uh, stimulation, you don't want your LH too low because then you're suppressed. If you're doing an FET, it doesn't make a huge difference um, unless you're using a letrozole protocol, in which case, again, you don't want your LH too low. Um, right before you do your, F your progesterone, um, it depends on what kind of protocol you're using. So that's a really complicated question because some people use natural and then they trigger, in which case you need your LH to, to surge or or sorry, a natural trigger. You need your LH to surge or sometimes people trigger them like themselves with HCG. Um, so there's all sorts of different ways to do this. So there's not one like specific number of hormones that are relevant. Um, generally speaking, you want your estrogen levels to be relatively low. There was one study we reviewed probably a year ago, which said you want your estrogen levels to at least be 100 picomoles. But that was just one study, so. My clinic wants me to do an HCG wash. Yeah. A week before FET. A week? You said just the same day as FET? Yeah. And should I cancel HCG wash, wash in my protocol? So um, a week doesn't make sense. The theory behind HCG wash is that as you develop your embryo, which forms in your fallopian tube when the sperm and the egg meet, that you are producing HCG and that it is slowly kind of drifting down your tube and slowly making HCG as it goes so that when it lands in your uterus, roughly on day three and implants by day five, that there is some HCG there. So if you put it in a week in advance, it's before it ever would naturally be produced. So that doesn't make any sense to me. So we do it 15 minutes before. There's a meta-analysis from an Iranian group um, that demonstrated that that was the best time to do it. So that's what we've always done 15 minutes before. So I wouldn't do it a week in advance, but I would do it 15 minutes before. And it does seem to work really well. What can I eat in my two week wait affect my outcome? No sugars. Sure. Well, a little bit of sugar is fine. Just have a healthy balanced diet. Like there's nothing you should do or not do. That's like super restrictive. The Mediterranean diet has been proven to be best. But um, dietary wise, you can optimize your health, but it's not like if you go out and have a cheeseburger, you're not gonna stay pregnant. Like it doesn't work that way, guys. So um, eat healthy, definitely keep your carbs low, keep your fats low, avoid like a lot of processed foods, um, you know, avoid heavy sugar, which is the carbs, but like a balanced diet is fine. Fruits, veggies, fish, grains, lots of olive oil. Thinking about a hamburger. Nothing like that very oily meal you and I had. Yeah. <laughs> that made us both sweat. <laughs> but you had it right away. Where's your immunity going? Yeah. That's what yeah. I say. My immunity and need for baby aspirin tonight. There you go. <laughs> Keep the arteries clear. Hi, T. Yeah. And Dr. P. And Dr. P. Okay. Yeah. All right. At least I got a shout out. This you time. got the whole doctor this time. I did. That's this true. Is good. This is good. All right. I'm listening. I'm five weeks, four days pregnant. I'm taking endometrium. How long should you lay down after inserting the pill? How long do you keep your patients oh. on endometrium? Um, 12 weeks uh, for endometrium. Um, it actually absorbs very quickly and then just water comes out. So you don't have to lie down, but if you really wanna be careful, maybe like half an hour or something like that, but that really interferes with your day. So I don't think it's critical. We don't use a ton of endometrin. Um, patients don't love the fizz, but um, we do use it. Um, so if you have coverage for it, it's great. 
High T, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. You know, people have figured out what gets your attention now. <laughs> it's kind of... Should it's, I switch it up? No. Should I, should I throw them off? No, no, no. They, they finally figured it out. Let them have their fun. I don't mind it either. There you go. <laughs> I don't mind. Let resolve to prime for egg retrieval instead of birth control? She asked us that. Oh. So come by that. that exclamation mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just go on for the view. Just go on for the exclamation marks. Uh, Dr. V&T. Yeah. My TSH was 1.38 in August. It went up to 2.63 upon positive. Okay. Cause for concern? Question mark. I was put on 12.5 MCG of Synthroid. 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 Uh, no, 2.63 is fine. I wouldn't alter that. I'd get it checked again because it's probably going to continue to climb. Um, and if it's much higher than 2.63, I'd bump up your dose. But... I probably wouldn't adjust the 2.63. We're looking for a 2.5. It doesn't need to be that specific. So you're okay. I'm currently taking Adderall for ADHD. Ah. What consequences would taking Adderall as a man have on my future child's life? Um, well, there is some evidence that Adderall can impact sperm performance, um, but it shouldn't impact your future child's life. So it might impact the sperm performance, but it shouldn't actually affect the development of your child or, or any other part of that. Um, I'm not aware of any long-term studies looking at Adderall use and um, offspring, um, but I'd probably be worth a look. How much, to talk, how much of testosterone patch is good to prime with? And for how long prior to CD1 would you start? Well, we use Androgel and we use 12 milligrams a day starting two weeks before your cycle day one. So that's what we do. There you go. Easy. Easy. Yeah. And that's what most of the studies recommend. What I do. That's what you, you don't want to admit to people you're using testosterone. That's what I recommend. That's what I meant. That's what I recommend to those that need it. <laughs> This is going to be like bleeped out in the final video. <laughs> the live videos never make it. That's yeah, there you the go. Live videos never make it. Yeah. Hi, Dr. V and Tarek. Okay. Catch that? The full name, full yeah. Name. Yeah. I'm just being yeah, yeah, yeah. relegated now. <laughs> yeah. I did an FET with an egg donor. Unfortunately, the first transfer didn't work. Okay. What can I do to have a successful pregnancy on the next transfer? I mean, I would need to know a lot about you. Um, those are always kind of crystal ball questions, but uh, there's loads you can do. And usually with an egg donor, if it fails, I really want to know why. So I need to know, um, you know, was it frozen eggs? Was it fresh? Was the sperm frozen? Was it fresh? Um, you know, how old was your donor? Uh, I need to know everything about you. Do you have endo? Um, what's your body mass index, smoking, drinking, drug use? Did your partner have smoking, drinking, drug use? Like there's a, a ton of stuff that goes into it. So those are never easy questions to answer. Um, are there things you can do? Yes, there's testing, there's treatments, but do you need them? I don't know unless I know more about you. Uh, no DRR but the clinic batches, so that's why they want to use birth control. Yeah, go somewhere else. Batching doesn't work. Um, I did it for years and it sucks. So um, don't go somewhere that batches. That's the easy answer for that one. Go to a different clinic. I mean, batching is not great. Um, it impacts your response and depending on how strong your ovaries are, um, it can affect things. Now, if you have no DOR, you might be okay. Um, and for that, you have to use birth control pill, but I'm not a fan of using birth control before IVF. I have to say our success rates are better now that we don't. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. And my old clinic, um, we had to because I couldn't be there all the time because it was in another city. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm glad I moved away from that. Um, so now we don't do that anymore. I just work 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah, I work a lot. IV and T. That's us. Yeah. Yeah. How do you know if someone's immune system is targeting the embryo leading to chemical miscarriages? Do you test 
NK cell level? Yeah, we do. So we test NK, we test your cytokine levels, your T helper one, T helper two ratio. Um, we look at the cytotoxicity of your NKs and whether it can be quelled by intralipids. We look at DQ alpha, and now there's this new thing called KIR, which is HLA mismatching, which is really important as well. So um, we explore a whole host of things in your immune system. We use fertilisys for that, but again, I never promote one company over another. That's just the one we use, but you can use any company you want that can provide you with those answers and that information. Hi, G. Just you. And uh. the... <laughs> <laughs> but they had a whole bunch of periods. So I thought I had to give it the, yeah. the appropriate pause. Yeah, yeah. I'm quitting the show. You're all paying too much attention to Doric. Yeah. 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 Um, we've missed Gary twice. Wait, I just need to wipe it Yeah, too. yeah. There's some good comedy here. Um, missed Gary twice. Missed Gary twice. Okay, nothing funny about that. No, okay. absolutely not. No, yeah. comedy was not related to that. No. After transferring two PGT tested embryos. Oh. Okay. Doing RPO testing yeah. this week. Okay. What testing is most crucial? Ooh. Um, thi well, there's not one test, right? Thyroid, vitamin D, sperm DNA fragmentation um, for your partner. Uh, you want to do a thrombophilia panel, and then you want to know if there's infections in your uterus, and you want to know if there's an immune reason for it. Um, those would be the basics I would start with, plus your hormones. Um, I would start with all of those. Uh, saline infusion sauna histogram to make sure there's nothing wrong with the shape of your uterus. That would also be really critical. Uh, so it's not just like one test. Like the proper approach to your situation with two failed, um, like two miscarriages with euploid embryos, that's a host of testing that has to be done very specifically to make sure we dot every I and cross every T because there is almost certainly something wrong with some part of that equation. This one's for you. Just for me. Yeah. All right. Although the intro is a bit weak, I think it comes from a good place, the question. It's worthy. Okay, yeah. I got you. Yep. Hi. <laughs> Exclamation mark. Okay. I've taken a year break from treatments. Okay. And starting at a new clinic. Great. Should I do all preliminary testing again? No clinic could ever get a follicle to grow. Oh. Um, well, I need to know more info about you. So you're one that can DM me. So DM me the details. I mean, if no one could get your follicle to grow because you had, um, you know, severe DOR, then I think you need a different discussion. Um, and there are ways to make follicles grow, even when you're resistant or in DOR, but um, they don't always work, but there are methods you can use. Testosterone priming, DHEA, human growth hormone, PRP, like there's a, a variety of things we can do for you. Um, so, so there may be ways to help you with that. If you aren't growing your follicle despite stimulation and you don't have DOR, there is a very small group of women that have an FSH receptor mutation and that can be tested for. So that might be something you need to look for. Um, that becomes very tricky. You actually need IVM where we harvest immature eggs and we mature them in the lab. Uh, it certainly doesn't work as well, but it's your only option. Um, so uh, we were actually set to do that for one of my patients and we tried one last time with IUI and she got pregnant with twins. So, uh, yeah, uh, it was a very cool story. Yeah. So anyways, that's the story with that. So yeah, it depends on what's going on. Um, DM me and I'll figure it out with you. That's a good one. Yeah. 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 I need to know if you're DOR, if you're DOR, you need protocols that will help you. If you're not DOR, you need to see what they did for you before and then figure it out. Could be you were too suppressed, could be they didn't know what they were doing. And also, I would want to know what you do in a natural cycle. If you make an egg in a natural cycle, then you're making an egg. If you're not making egg in a natural cycle, then I need to know why. Are you too thin? Are you underweight? Are you too stressed? You know, is there a hormonal problem? That kind of thing. Good question. That was a good case. We haven't had anyone ask that before. Sweet. That's why I didn't. 
try and answer it. Too. There you go. This was new to me. Yep. My sperm sample have bad morphology. Okay. 95% had defects. Okay. Could this be caused by my first grade varicocele? Uh, yeah. So varicoceles overheat your testicle. And if you have an overheated testicle, your morphology will be poor. So, yes, it is possible. I mean, a, a grade one varicocele is pretty small, but no varicocele is good. So um, it's always an option to get rid of it. You might be able to get around it by just cooling the testicles. So sit on frozen peas. But um, aside from that, it's, you know, unknown. First grade one? Grade one. Sperm grade one? No, 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 no. He's grading the varicocele. Oh. That's why you're the doctor. That's why you're the doctor. Now it's clear. Everyone knows. I outed myself. You totally outed yourself. <laughs> Excellent. He was joking. I do it for the show. Yeah, he was totally joking. Yeah. How soon before an FET should I stop using retinol? Also, is. Same question. They asked us that before, way before. Different, different question. Way before, like stop, like a month in advance. How about doing a egg retrieval without benzodiazepines? Benzodiazepines? Yeah, that's it. Oh, um, I mean, if you're using, if you're going somewhere where there's propofol, sure. If you're going somewhere where there isn't propofol, uh, it's going to hurt. So um, I, I always use both. We use fentanyl and we use Versed, which is a benzodiazepine. It's midazolam. You could try without it, but I wouldn't. I, I think you'd be very uncomfortable. Oh, you, you made a huge boo-boo. I made a boo-boo? <laughs> How did I make a boo-boo? Uh, the um, birth control. People are... It looks like people are prescribed it. Yeah. So a lot of people are now have a lot of questions. Oh, people yeah. Up Pandora's. Yeah, never, never use birth control before your your cycle. Did you just say don't use birth control before IVF? <laughs> I'm supposed to start birth control continuously until told otherwise in prep for IVF cycles. Now I'm very confused. Yeah, don't. Um, it suppresses you. And uh, there's a study from Kolo Bianakis in Greece that showed that it increases your miscarriage rates unless you're on it for more than six weeks. So we don't use birth control. I stopped ages ago, like two or three years ago. Um, we stopped using it because it, it reduces your chances of success. So I would avoid it if I were you. Oh God, I have DOR and I'm bashing as per our clinic's recommendations. Our results are consistently worse each cycle. So if you have DOR, you cannot use birth control. It will definitely reduce your egg count. Um, you should really talk to us and come to us or go to somewhere else where they can help you on your timeline because you need priming and you need to try hopefully to make as many eggs as possible. And if your results are getting worse, why would you go back to the same thing? Remember the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting to get a different result. So um, the reality is that's not going to work. You need to go somewhere where they can actually help you. Um, so don't go somewhere where they're batching if you have DOR. Batching and DOR should never go in the same sentence. Never. So ever, should, ever. So we should be avoiding birth control. You should be avoiding birth control. Yes. Vigorously. Yep. There's the odd time where I have to do it. Like, for example you know, someone that's menopausal and we're trying to make their egg grow because you kind of need to sink things or someone that just doesn't get a period. I have one patient with severe Asherman's. We talked about using birth control for a month just to kind of know where she is in her cycle and get her eggs to grow. But even for that, if you just follow them super closely with blood work and ultrasound, you don't need to put them on birth control and they'll be less suppressed. Pandora's box. Um, Dr. V, you keep saying not to use birth control, <laughs> but what else can you use if you don't get your period? Uh, letrozole or Provera, or you don't need to get a period. Um, like when we have cancer patients, guys, 
we don't wait for a time in their cycle. We just start stimming them and you'll grow eggs. When we do luteal phase stimulation for duostim, we're getting eggs in the luteal phase. So um, you don't need to have a period. It's irrelevant to your stimulation. But birth control will suppress you. So um, use something else. Now, the bigger question is why aren't you getting a period? Um, and that's a whole other issue, but you don't need a period to start IVF. It's just for us to know when your follicles are supposed to grow, but you can actually just start IVF at any point in the cycle. It doesn't matter. More, there, more birth control? <laughs> uh, it, it paused for now. I, I think they think they're good. Okay. I have to, I have to read into those right away because people were worried. People were really worried. I, that, was, that was a big reaction. Hiya. Hiya. You both are amazing. Oh, yeah. See? We are. Go. There you go. Dr. V. Me. That's right. Yeah. The doctor. I'm still waiting for them to ask you a question, but anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. You recommend yeah. a double trigger with electrical antagonist protocol. Yes. I always get an HCG trigger, but thought switching it up might help with egg quality. There's no question. You'll get more mature eggs, more embryos, better outcomes with the double trigger. So yes, agonist and the HCG together, for sure. Can you use double trigger if Lupron reuse? Yeah, so um, some people say you can't, but I've been doing it for about a year and a half, I think. So we've had no trouble with it. It works perfectly fine. How many eggs should a 37 year old freeze for one potential baby? Oh, you're challenging my memory. I think it's 25. We have a Instagram post on it from like way back, way, way back. I think it was the one with the frozen egg. Do you remember that one? It's like a picture of a frozen egg. Uh, I think you need about 25 frozen eggs to get one baby at, um, at that age. Yeah. I'll see if I can find it, but you can keep going. What about doing egg retrieval? We did that. Uh, when a woman becomes pregnant and the CRL, BPM, GS all measures well, but the YS. Yolk sac. Young sac? Yolk sac. Yolk sac is enlarged yolk sac. How concerned should we be at eight weeks? If a woman tests negative to antibodies of CVM and Parvo, what things should be avoided? Thank you so much. Really appreciate your show. Um, okay, so an enlarged yolk sac, more than seven millimeters is associated with an increased risk of a genetic abnormality and miscarriage. So if it's more than seven millimeters, you don't necessarily have to be worried, but it does give us pause to be a little more vigilant. Um, and it can lead to complications. Uh, with regards to parvo and CMV, avoid kids. I mean, there's you know, parvovirus is fifth disease, slap cheek disease. So it's, a, it's amongst the kids. And if you get it in the first 20 weeks, it is risky. So I would avoid being around kids if you can avoid it. Mask, glove, hand sanitizer, all that. What protocol do you stuff. use for egg freezing for a hypothalamic amenorrhea? Amenorrhea? Uh -huh. uh, same protocol. We would just stim like we normally do, going left and menopure. Yep. And I mean, depending on why you were hypothalamic, I would try and correct that first. So if it's underweight, we would make you gain some weight. If you're stressed, we would help deal with the stress. Um, if it's an eating disorder, we deal with the eating disorder. So it all depends on what the problem is. I have stage four endo. Oh, sorry. I've seen a specialist and just learned that I that the wait period is 10 to 12 months for surgery with her. No. Can you recommend another endo specialist for lap surgery? Oh boy, uh, in Ontario, Sony Singh, um, probably one of the best. Grace Liu, uh, Guillain Lefebvre, um, Yoav Brill, uh, George Vilos, um, Nick Leyland. Um, what's that other guy's name? The Theodore? Oh, I can't remember. There's another guy in Hamilton. He's also really good. Um, me but i don't do bowel surgery uh so um and there's a couple of other people around toronto that are quite good so 
those are the ones I know. Is there anything that suggests lupus can have an effect on fertility? Oh, huge. So lupus causes thrombosis and has a huge increase in the risk of miscarriage. You need aspirin and heparin. I actually spoke to a patient yesterday who had been diagnosed by another clinic, a well-known clinic, with lupus anticoagulant, and they didn't give her aspirin and heparin. They wanted to give her steroids. And I was like, what? That doesn't even make any sense. So yeah, you, you need aspirin and heparin for that. They should come see me in my office for these kind of things. For you, yeah, kind of yeah, cases, yeah. So and you could those. buy some water or get some yeah. social media stuff yeah. done. we can handle all that, to be honest. <laughs> Dr. Vicky, we don't cry. This is obviously a response to when you were wiping the tears out of your eyes. Oh, okay, yeah. We need your eyes dry. So when you retrieve our egg, we can, cry <laughs> we can actually cry together. I love it. You know what? We did an awesome egg retrieval for a family today who has struggled a lot. And um, they had an amazing outcome. We got eight mature eggs from them when they had not done so well before. So I was super pumped about that. Hi, Dr. V. I flushed every bloody egg, though. You're great at that. They Even are when you so it, sticky. I really feel you're in there. Yeah, we got a video of that. The oh. eggs were so sticky, but we got them all. I had to flush every single one to get it out. Every one. Wouldn't come out without flushing, but I got them. It's good then you're a skilled individual. <laughs> Do you recommend the use of Emma and Alice testing after endometritis in a failed cycle? What are your thoughts? Um, we use Fertilisys. I just don't trust iGenomics. But yes, Emma and Alice is a reasonable test. It's very similar to Fertilisys. So yeah, I would do it, especially if you already know that you have endometritis. You need to know what to treat. Is there a specific surrogate agency you work with? Um, we work with all surrogate agencies there's no one we don't work with um so you can check it out on our website um there are a couple of other ones that aren't listed there yet um but yeah we work with a whole bunch of them so if you go to drvictory.com and then you go to the services tab or infertility infertility tab and then on the far right you'll see like egg donors sperm donors and then surrogates and carriers click on that and there's several pages worth of bars um, with links, like hyperlinks, that you can click on and it'll take you to the surrogate agencies. Is an estrus and Provera Prime less suppressive than birth control prime? No, don't use estrogen before your cycle. It actually decreases your success rates. They've shown that in a randomized controlled trial. Lupus follow-up. Lupus follow-up. What if? What if? I can't take aspirin because I also have low blood platelets. Oh. Um, that's tough. Wow. Oh, wow. That's really tough. Details are important. I don't know. Um, probably immunoglobulin therapy. Maybe. Plus, minus... I mean, you'd have to talk to a hematologist, but maybe Plaquenil, um, steroids, that kind of thing. You'd want to suppress as much of the lupus anticoagulant production as you could. That's a tough scenario, though. Mm. I don't know. I'd, I'd want to know more about your history. If you'd already had several miscarriages, those are situations where sometimes it's reasonable to consider a surrogate. Great scenario. I would love to know more. Let me know if I can help you. Do you recommend to add baby aspirin or interlipids if you have high levels of NK cells? Just doing stimulation, no transfer yet. Um, you don't need it during stim, for sure. It has no impact. Uh, during transfer, we always use aspirin and intralipids with NK activity, yes, for sure. Hi, Dr. Green -Z. How many days should I rest after my FET? Um, only as much as you need to to feel good. So some people feel good going right back to normal activity. That's what they should do. Some people want to take a break for a day just to make sure they feel like they did something. That's fine. Um, you don't need more than a day. It's either stuck or not stuck. Protocols for DOR and low AMA? Um, testosterone priming. Uh, definitely good. We showed that on the recent show. 
um, where it demonstrated an increase in even live birth. Um, it doubled live birth, so that was amazing. Uh, you want to use DHEA, uh, human growth hormone, um, letrozole. All of those have been shown to be beneficial. Um, medium to moderate kind of levels of uh, gonadotropins. We use a microdose flare, but you can use an antagonist protocol. And then uh, double trigger. Don't go more than 12 days. Get what you're going to get. High tea. Oh, lots of supplements. Sorry, I should have said that. Coins on Q10. Lots of supplements. High tea. High tea. You can get this one. Okay. What's the process for those based in Toronto to become your patients? Uh, just get a referral. And then um, we bring you into the system. We do stuff virtually for your consult. And then I work with several clinics in Toronto. Um, my good friends at Tripod, there's IVF Canada, I have privileges at Create. So um, we can work at any of those clinics, but most of our patients choose to come to us for our lab because our lab's amazing. And so they'll monitor there and they'll just come here for retrieval and transfer. Are there some protocols that use birth control or any reasons why you would use it? Uh, like I said earlier, the only time I would use birth control is if I had no other way of figuring out when someone's period was going to be. Um, or there was like a cyst or something, but you still want to avoid using it close to your IVF cycle. So no, don't use birth control. There, there are actually studies showing that birth control prior to IVF is detrimental. Maybe we can review that I next really time. I think you should. I think we got it. That would be a whole that's video, right? Video yeah, that's sure. a whole yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it completely took over. The oh, show. I know. I You've see never that. Had a comment like that. I know. I know. Yeah, don't. We, I've said it to people before, though. I said, don't use birth control. Well, now you have quite the audience. Now we have quite the audience. That's true. Um, you know what, guys? Uh, I'll, you keep asking questions. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll see if I can find. Uh, I have frozen donor eggs arriving November 11th. Oh, what cool. are the percentages or stats of eggs that may not survive the fall? Um, most studies show about a 70% survival rate when you're thawing the eggs. Um, it, it apparently is getting better and better. I'm not a huge fan of frozen eggs, so uh, we don't use them. We use fresh, but um, it, it can be higher than 70, but most studies will, will say 70. Thanks for your answer. So No problem. I don't think people talking to me. Oh, to you? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just joking. <laughs> I am so sorry that I stole your glory there. No, yeah. No, 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 no. So if I usually do a uh, 10,000 HCG trigger, yeah. would what would be the dosage for the double trigger? HCG plus Lupron? Yeah, so we usually use... Um, two milligrams of Lupron and 1500 of HCG, but it has to be titrated to your estrogen and your um, uh, number of eggs. If you make a really high number of eggs and uh, have a high and or have a high level of estrogen, you can't have a, a high HCG level, or you will um, end up having a, a huge problem with hyperstimulation syndrome. This is a great question. Okay. I love this. Okay. How far into Canada is your clinic past Detroit? What are we, 15, 15 minutes? I think I can throw my rock <laughs> and hit Detroit. Um, okay, Superman. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're 15 minutes from the border. Can we screen share? We're on the tunnel. We're, we're, we're right there. Yeah, we're, the we're very we're, close. We're, we're the first city after the tunnel. We got, we got to answer everybody's oral conscious. I got to show them this. Oh, John you, Thimer, No, Thimer. I'm going to show them a study, yeah. Okay, screen yeah. share. Because this, this is the first one I hit on a PubMed search. Yeah, hold on, hold on. The very first one. You won't prepare for that. You're, I know. You're, you're messing me up. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I'm waiting. <laughs> Do I look like I'm doing something over here? Potentially I talk to myself at times. There you go. Oh, regarding the uh, hop, skip, and a jump away from Detroit? Yeah. Perfect. I'm telling my hubby, I'm on my way. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. All right, ready? You go ahead. This is effective pretreatment with oral contraceptives and progestins on IVF outcomes in women with PCOS. So this is PCOS, but there's like a million different studies, okay? This is just the very first one I hit. 
Study question, do oral contraceptives and progestins impact live birth rate of IVF when used for cycle scheduling, which is batching, in women with PCOS? Answer, oral contraceptives used for scheduling IVF cycle were associated with lowered rates of pregnancy and live birth after fresh embryo transfer, whereas progestins used for this purpose yield higher rates of pregnancy and live birth than oral contraceptives. Not than nothing, than oral contraceptives. So you do not want to be using the birth control pill prior to um, your cycle. Um, there's a million of them. I'd have to go through it and look, but trust me when I tell you that uh, it is not a good thing. There's actually a meta-analysis on it. I'll have to find that. Yeah. I will find it at some point. Hi, Dr. Green T. What is microdose protocol you just mentioned? Microdoses of Lupron, um, which actually we can't get anymore. But anyways, uh, we use Superfactor Decapeptil. So you use little tiny doses, which takes advantage of the fact that if you use really small doses of a GnRH agonist, it actually pushes your ovaries instead of suppresses them. And so you can actually help make more eggs going that way. Yeah, we're right. not still sharing, are we? No, no, you're done. Okay. Tarek asked the doc what he recommends for endometritis allergic to doxy, so can't be that. Well, I recommend you find out what your endometritis is from. You can't randomly treat endometritis. That's why we use fertilis. They actually tell us which bacteria are in there, and then I target those bacteria. So just hitting you with antibiotics won't do it because you might need one or you might need four. So it's not enough. Can we screen share again? Yes, sir. You ready? Yeah, yeah. And then you're we still got going. You're good. Oh, I'm still going. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're Here's good. another one from 2020 in fertility and sterility. By the way, the first one was in human reproduction. Effective pretreatment oral contraceptives on fresh and cumulative. So this would be including frozen embryos. Live birth and in vitro fertilization cycles. And this is in ovulatory women, so not the PCOS group, okay? 3,010 women, big study. Conclusions, pretreatment oral contraceptive use is associated with a reduction in um, FLBR, which is uh, continued live birth, uh, sorry, which is fresh live birth, and CLBR, which is cumulative live birth. So trust me when I tell you, you do not want to use birth control pill before you do your IBF cycle. Wow. Sorry guys, if you are, come see us or anybody else that can provide you with non-batching care. Yeah. I don't know if I read this or not. Does Clexane, did I do anything with Clexane? Did I, did I no, read no Clexanes okay. today. Clexane's always Australia or, or the UK. Cause it's, oh yeah, I it's, think she's from Australia. It's their term for, well, it wouldn't be the UK cause no one's awake at this hour, but. Well, Australia. Australia, Australia for sure. It's, uh, it's their heparin, they call mm. it Clexane. Steroids and interlipids always work for NK cells or is it just experimental? Uh, no, nothing isn't always when you're dealing with immunological um, reproductive issues. So uh, interlipids help, steroids can help. Sometimes you need IVIG or subcutaneous IG. Um, yeah, those are the main, main ones. Plaquenil, Viagra, they can help too. Dr. V, do you use Recovel? Yeah. What are your thoughts on it versus Gonolet? Uh, love Recovel, great product. Love Gonal F, great product. Don't have anything negative to say about either one. Um, they're really good. Um, we typically use Gonal F, and then in some cases we use Recovel, especially for women that are older or someone that previously failed Gonal F. Then we'll switch to Recovel. What's the wait time to see you once given a referral? Depends on how urgent it is. So we do triage people. So if you're older or have DOR, we'll see you sooner. Um, if you are, have only been trying for two months and are desperate to get in to see a fertility specialist, you'll be waiting for a while because that's not long enough to need us yet. So it all just depends on the urgency. Age is factored in, your diagnosis, your past history, all of that stuff. We try and get you in as quickly as possible. And frequently, my colleague, Dr. Carrie Mayrand, who I trained personally, um, will talk to patients first just to kind of get them in and get their testing. And then I follow up with the results and tell you what's going on. Do you take USA insurance? I 
can't take USA insurance. Not yet, we're working on it, but it is extremely difficult. And um, we have progeny, and we just found out that if the employer doesn't allow their employees to use their progeny outside of the US, we can't accept it. So it's kind of tough for US insurance, yeah. We are way cheaper than the US, like way, way cheaper, usually a third of the price, but um, insurance does become an issue. How long does it take to get on your schedule for a consult? Again, we triage. Sometimes I'll see people that a cancer patient I'll see the next day, literally within 24 hours, I'll see any cancer patient. If it's not a cancer patient, anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of months, it depends on how urgent it is. How do you deal with uneven follicle growth with estrogen priming? I don't estrogen prime. Um, and then we use Duostim. So we'll just go for the ones we can get, get them, and then wait a couple of days and stimulate the other ones to grow. I know. Huge show? I felt it deserved it. You felt it deserved it? All right. They showed out. Four more minutes? Three Absolutely. three more minutes? All right. Absolutely. All right, fire away. Not even. Look, we're, we're getting through them. But. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wifey. Yeah. Dead. Yeah. Does yeah. time change affects PIO or any other medication before transfer? Does time change? I yeah. don't get it. Wow. I, I don't know. Don't does, know, does don't know what I mean. Does time change affect time change? Affect PIO? Like going back an hour, daylight savings, maybe? No, not at all. Okay, I think that's the question. No. When is daylight savings for us? Soon. It happened in Europe. You need to scrap that. Because it screwed up my weekend. Up weekend. <laughs> all my Zoom meetings with Europe were like... <laughs> Hi, Doc. Yeah. That's for you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. I figured that one was for me. Well, there's, there's no team here. Like, I, I had to let them know. But you still read I it. Noticed. I get yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, All right. It. Yeah. Okay. That's the main thing. Okay. Yeah. How long after the last Lupron Depot shot should you expect to ovulate again? Went straight into it, FET, but it failed and not ovulating the following one. Oh, that's odd. Um, you should be, it should only, if you're just taking the one month dose, the 3.75, you should ovulate the next month. How commonly do you see patients who have fertility benefit coverage? Wondering how commonly you see it. For drugs, um, all the time, especially in a heavily unionized city like Windsor. For the procedure, very rarely. Um, up until very recently, it was only Manulife that had it, and not a lot of people around here had Manulife. Um, I just found out Green Shield is now covering some, but it's complicated. So um, I think it's coming, but we don't see it often. Dr. V. Yeah. Can you go over prenatal vitamins and what folate should it contain? Some have folate in form of folic acid and some have MTHF. Fol yeah. So um, we have a video on this. It's called The Good, the Bad, and the Prenatal. Mm -hmm. It's with Dr. Jennifer Strong, our naturopath. And uh, you should watch the video because it's all in there. We actually did a head-to-head -head comparison of all the vitamins. Um, but you're ideally aiming for five milligrams. And in some instances, you want the folinic or MTH um, uh, folic acid. In some cases, it's fine to just take folic acid. So if you have MTHFR, um, then you want to take folinic acid. If you don't, it doesn't really matter. Okay, guys, I've been given the signal to close shop because our um, wives are going to kill us. Um, so uh, have a good night. Thank you very much for joining us and making us a hugely popular show. Uh, we love you guys. Um, and thank you for following on Instagram, and, I mean on uh, YouTube, and following us on Instagram. Um, our subscribers on YouTube just keep on growing and growing and growing, and people love the videos. So uh, make sure you check out Embryo Math if you haven't already. It'll tell you what your chances are. Um, we've got a top uh, five vitamins. We've got top five ways to improve your FET. Uh, really interesting data in that one, so check that one out for sure. And if there's ever anything myself or Tarek can do for you, let us know. Have a great night and we'll see you next week with Dr. Prati Sharma, hopefully, from Create Fertility. She's going to join us and talk to us about some of her favorite topics. 
And I think we're going to do like a little bit of a virtual traveling roadshow and visit some other fertility specialists throughout the country and see what they're up to. So have a great night, guys, and we will talk to you soon.